the current is really, really strong, so it would be hard for like a human to swim across. And I see this man on one side of the river, and he's trying to get to the other side. There isn't a bridge, so it's like unexplored territory. No one has been there before to build this bridge, or for whatever reason, the ways in which to get across the river has not been there, it has not been built. And so he's looking at it, and he's like, I really need to get to the other side. I've got things to do on the other side. Um, and there are like a flock of elephants uh, grazing behind him. And on this side, I feel like there's like a, a field of sugar cane, okay? So he's just like, well, let me hack off some of these sugar canes, and let me just try to lure one of the elephants, and maybe I'll ride on the elephant, and then I'll cross the river. So then he hacks off. He has a, a little knife thing, and he hacks off some of the um, sugarcane stalks, goes over to the elephant, and it loves sugarcane for whatever reason. It loves sugarcane, so it follows him. He got a really big elephant. He got on it, and he starts to feed it, and so he leads it forward into the water, and it's not afraid of the water because, you know, it's, it's really heavy, so it, the current doesn't phase it at all so eventually it, it crosses the river with the man on its back he hops off gives it the remainder of the sugarcane stalks and then he goes on his way so that alone indicates to me you know problem solving using your in ingenuity and using the resources all around you and at your disposal in order to get yourself on the other side if the bridge hasn't been made for you. You're the one that is, you know, um, creating that pathway for yourself, okay? Ben and using the resources at your disposal in order to do that. Um, there is another image that came up when I was meditating for you, but I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit um, because I feel like it will tie in better with the end of the reading. It involves uh, moths and fireflies. It's really cool. So let me just uh, get the cards out. So I feel like there has been a situation where you feel, and this is something that I got to with uh, the Cancerian people. There has been a situation that felt very, very daunting. Okay, It's almost like, how do I tackle this? How do I achieve it? How do I even begin? Like, where do I even begin to start? And, you know, you, like I mentioned with the cancers, they have a little bit of a uh, self-doubt. And whatever is in front of them, they doubt their own capabilities. Am I able to do it? You guys are Leos. Your energy is very, very different from a shy cancer. And so it's not that you're having self-doubt. It's just, how do I resolve it? It hasn't been done before or... I'll see the solution when I stumble upon the solution. So I, I feel like you're mulling some things over. And it seems like this big mountain in front of you, this big unexplored virgin territory, this big forest, and there's no trail that has been blazed yet. And you guys are very, very smart, and you're not afraid, like you're not risk adverse. So... Rather than, you know, climbing from the base of the mountain all the way on top, you're thinking about possibly zip lining. okay? Cancers are very, very, very afraid in general of um, trailblazing. So they were thinking about, you know, let me get to that base of the mountain and then find my way up, gradually find my way up. And I have to pack a lot of gears. I don't know how long that trek up the mountain is going to take, but I'm going to do it. So they're doing it, I feel, in their way, whatever works for them, whatever doesn't give them anxiety, okay? It might be the hard way, but for many of you, you're already thinking about stringing some type of a zip line all the way from where you are to that top of the mountain so that you can get yourself there a lot faster, and because you're not afraid of heights, because you are in need of an adventure, and you're thinking that it might be the fastest way, so why work hard when you can work fast? You know, why build things? It's almost like, why start from the bottom when you can be ingenious and daring and do something differently, and learning to problem solve, and, and not let obstacles get in the way, 
Okay, so I feel like you're the, the way in which you're looking at a problem is very, very different from the cancers. But I also feel for many of you, it's almost like, why reinvent the wheel? Let's look at all the resources, and no cards are coming out. This is amazing. Let's look at all the resources at our disposal and put them to use to work for us. Why do we need there? Uh, why do we need to sit there and reinvent the wheel and do things, you know, from scratch when we have already, when we're like on the shoulders of giants? You know, we already have a bird's eye view. We already know how how things are made, how things are done, how to build a bridge. But why do we need to sit there? brick by brick, stone by stone, and build a bridge when we can easily zip line, okay? So I'm seeing possibly some of you are frustrated with the ways, the, the slow process in which things are moving. And then I'm also seeing for many of you, you're in a period where you're possibly moving into like a new work environment or you're trying to um, build up, you know, your build up the stages in your financial sector and you're possibly wondering what is the fastest way for me to make money? What is the, the most logical and the fastest way for me to make money? So I do see this ivory tower type of an energy. Many of you might be in school. Many of you are could potentially be going through school, learning something, learning something very, very technical, and you're at the uh, end stages of it where you're taking everything that you're learning and you're applying it in the real world, okay? This ivory tower approach. I've already been there. Now I want to apply everything that I learn in a practical way. And you're, you know how a lot of the times entry-level positions they don't start out with, you know, a, a very extravagant pay scale, right? Like it, it takes a while for us to like start at the bottom and be like entry level and then move up gradually and be like a junior executive or a junior something. And then we enter into like mid career level and then we enter high career level. It's a process. It takes many, many, many years to build up the experience and the skills and the, the expertise to be considered a serious player in some type of a work environment. And many of you are just like, I'm anxious to just get out there, get my hands dirty and see what sticks. Or I'm anxious to just get out there and make my mark on the world because Leo, it's all about what you're capable of doing and all about what what type of like um, how to kind of expand your energy into a specific environment so I feel many of you are thinking about that and if you are kind of like at the already at the apex of some type of a career situation you're contemplating where do I go from here where do I go next Many of you might be pulled towards a different career path and you're contemplating, you're comfortable here. Financially, you're very, very like sitting pretty. You're in a really good space. And this is the Queen of Pentacles. And what I see with this is this is somebody that just generates money. She doesn't need to lift a finger. She probably has people getting her coffee. She probably has people, you know, like a secretary that uh, does her mail outs, that does all of her uh, tasks, all of her errands. So she sits in an office and she just generates money just by being there. So I feel like you're already sitting pretty in a really good career, in a really, really good job. And you're contemplating as well. Yes, I'm comfortable here, but in two years time, I might be bored and I'm looking for the next adventure. And if I were to shift into a new work environment, Potentially, do I have to start building from the bottom? If yes, is there a faster way for me to do it? So I feel like you're researching. The hermit is shining light on the situation. This is usually investigation, doing some digging, doing some research, doing something where you're like finding out other options, finding out what's available to you, possibly even job searches or even, you know, searching for a home, searching for a new location, something. And 
I feel like you want to cut out the middleman. You don't want to start from the bottom. You want something that's already prepared or pre-made where you can just slip in and be comfortable. So I see for many of you, uh, there's this element coming in where you're heavily contemplating and talking about and churning things over in your mind. What's the next step? What is the next two years going to look like? And how do I get there the fastest, okay? Um, I'm seeing, you know, this two energy, like choosing options. And I feel for many of you, this could be in a, uh, even a love situation too. We have an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. And the relationship with this person seems a little bit challenging, okay? It seems like it's an uphill battle or an uphill climb. And then I also feel an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. They're definitely very loving, very nurturing, very financially stable. Both signs are very independent as well. You yourself are incredibly independent. And so there is a sense here about wanting to have somebody exclusively to ourselves. And I feel like these people are so independent or, and are so wrapped up in their own career, their own lives, their, their own vision of what they want to do with their lives. That the relationship might feel like you might feel a little bit isolated in the relationship. You might feel like they're not giving you enough um, attention and TLC and just, you know, um, acknowledgement. That's what it feels like to me. And then I'm also seeing as well, you know, one job is a little bit more like research oriented where you're kind of like by yourself doing your own thing. It seems exciting. And then another job is like more of a corporate type of a, a, a job situation where you're managing people. You're possibly very detached from the hands-on operation of the work. And then the other job is you're in the, you're in the field. You're very hands-on. And it might not pay a lot, whereas the managerial job pays a lot, but you're just like, that's not super exciting. So you're contemplating, do I forego the financial, um, re the financial promise, or do I want to choose the job that is a little bit more exciting, okay? I feel like the job that takes you to a far away land is going to be right up your alley and it's going to bring you a lot more happiness and stability further down the line because this is something that your soul wants to explore okay and then I feel for many of you if you're just starting out it's easier to get that out of your system right now rather than later on when you look back and you're just like that was one thing I always wanted to do, but now I'm in a career and I feel really safe and you might not be willing to take the risk anymore because the financial payout has been building up and now you're very afraid of, you know, venturing into a new path. So I feel like, you know, the universe is really asking you to take the more exciting path, mainly because, well, it's coming in for you. This horse is riding in and she's like undecided. So I feel like this opportunity is going to come and go. Lots of people are eyeing this opportunity. You might have lots of competition in your environment. So something's coming in fast. And you have to be on the uh, quick on the uptake. Okay, I feel like you're still mulling this decision over. That horse is going to breeze by and it's going to be gone. So I feel like you have to really um, quick on the uptake. So, you know, like um, make a decision. Let me see what else is available here. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, this new exciting path, it might require like a major overhaul of your life. So picking up all of your belongings and relocating in a new city, in a new country, in a new continent, in a foreign environment even. So it seems like it's a major overhaul of your lifestyle. And it's not a decision that you make lightly. So we're moving from the five inner conflicts, trying to decide which way to go, okay? to a 10 where you have already made the decision and I feel 
I feel like you're on the right path. I don't feel that you need to worry here. Let's see. Four of Cups. Still wondering if we're making the right choice. Yeah, so what's happening here is that really, really stable job. I feel like it brings about financial stability. It is going to be a lot of hard work. And uh, I'm getting as well, you know, in a being in a situation that's not overly um, stimulating or overly exciting. And then there's another job where things are just new, brand new and exciting. Okay. And then we have the nine of pentacles. So, yeah, I feel like travel and movement and foreign lands and overseas, like all of these things are calling out to you. And I feel like you have to take these opportunities. You, you need to make a split decision here. Because look at this. I feel like you're waiting... Out, you're holding out. You're holding out for the best option. Something might have come in already. Okay, this horse is coming in. You're waiting for the unicorn. Okay, you're you're waiting for this Pegasus, this horse with wings. So I feel like yes, there's something stable, but you're you're longing for that that thing that will revolutionize your life, that will change your lifestyle, and I feel like you're biding your time, and I feel like whatever it is that you're vying for. There's a lot of uh, competitors as well. So if they made you an offer, it's because they really, really, really want you, okay? And there's nothing more amazing than being in a work environment where somebody really wants you. There's nothing more exciting than being in a relationship with somebody who really, really, really wants you, right? So that's just something I want you to really think about. And I feel like money is not going to be a problem, okay? You guys are very resourceful. You can feed like a, a family of 20 with a very um, limited or meager income. You guys are really, really creative. You guys are very resourceful, okay? So I feel like because of that, and you guys are really generous as well. And anytime uh, someone behaves in a very generous manner where even if you don't have enough, you always welcome people into your homes. And this is what I really enjoy about Leos. I've seen a lot of Leos who are in school who are struggling financially or some Leos with a lot of children and they're really, really struggling, you know, like single parent with a lot of children is trying to make ends meet. But then whenever one of their children's friends who might not come from a good family are neglected or malnourished, they always welcome those children into the home, they always welcome guests into the home, they take care of them, they feed them, nurture them. And because of that, your energy is so abundant that you start to create that energetic flow and other areas of your life become abundant. So money is not going to be a problem for you. So if, you, if you're contemplating between those two options, financial abundance or a really exciting career or a really exciting job, you're going to be fine, okay? The Nine of Pentacles is like sailing or flying over uh, hard financial times, okay? This is a card about making your money grow for you. This is a card about like not having to worry. There, It seems as if there's something missing, like you're never at the apex, you're never at that full completion stage. But the full completion stage is that Ten of Pentacles where everything is in its place and everything feels really heavy and bogged down and sedentary. This is a better place to be. You want to grow and you don't want it to trap you in one situation or one place. So this is a better place to be. Let me find the Ten of Pentacles and let me just show you the difference. Okay, here it is. So Ten of Pentacles, lots of people house, responsibilities, everything is very sedentary, right? Whereas this situation, it grows organically, it flows out, it nourishes everything. And it grows in a way where it doesn't stop growing. So it's like infinite. And this is a much better place to be. This is freer, more liberating. 
you feel like you can exhale and you feel like you have leisure time to really enjoy yourself. So if you're debating between that nine to five corporate even environment where there's a lot of responsibilities, you're overseeing people, you're managing people, guarding people, watching over people's shoulders, like having to survey people, it doesn't seem like something that you want to do. It might come with the status and the pay increase or even, you know, the prestige, but at the end of the day, you're cleaning up after people, okay? You're cleaning up after people have done their harvest, and that doesn't seem like something I feel would be suitable for you. Whereas, at in this stage, you have more leisure time, so it could even be potentially, you know, um, getting rid of this nine to five and then doing something where you're self-employed and it's going to explode. It's going to take off or even cutting back your hours, like working part time where you have more time for leisure activities. And that's great too. There's nothing wrong with that. So you do what you need to do. And, um, this is why I waited until the very last minute to show, to tell you about the second image that I saw for you, because I feel like you were making a, some type of a decision. It was like a crossroads. Okay. And here's what I saw. I said it involves uh, moths and fireflies. So I see this little girl. She's in a in, in, in a house, and the house is uh, made of glass. Okay, so you can see her in the house. All the lights are on in the house. So and it's a night scene. You're looking through her backyard, and you're looking at the house. She's in the house. She's reading a book, and all the lights are on in the room in her house and it's dark outside so it seems like almost like her house is like a lantern because it's made of glass and then everything else outside is really dark and um, she's reading and uh, all these moths start flying in and so the first one comes in she takes it out and releases it into the wild and then all the uh, more moths come in and every time it comes in it distracts her from her book and so she takes it out and then she releases it back into the in, into the woods or into the backyard. And then it keeps happening. She's just like, oh, I'm never going to be able to read. So she puts her book down and she's like, might as well go outside. So she takes the last few moths outside. And then when she comes outside, the whole backyard is like lit up with fireflies. So when I saw this, I was thinking the moths, moths are drawn to a flame, right? Like they're, they're drawn to light. And I feel like whatever is happening, you're drawing in a lot of abundance. You're sending out good energies and you're drawing it all in. And so you will never be in a space where you're lacking in any capacity, okay? So that's just a reassurance for you guys. Whatever decision that you make, you will never be in a space of financial lack. So it's really important for you to keep that in mind and make decisions that you feel stirs your heart because with Leos with any fixed signs any fixed signs when you do things you do things to the best of your capabilities that's just the nature of a fixed sign also Virgos too but um, fixed signs don't give up failure is not an option for a fixed sign so if you know yourself to be like that why would you invest your time and your energy and your resources into something that your heart is not 100% in, right? That's just common sense. And that's just authentically, that's you. You put 100% in something. So you need to make sure that something is completely, thoroughly and 100% in alignment with what your heart desires, okay? And so these fireflies, Fireflies communicate through the lights that they emit, okay? They communicate with each other. And um, what I feel is I'm seeing tropics. I'm seeing humidity. I'm seeing something that is um, really appealing or like it, it feels very magical. It feels magical. So I feel like that's some, something that might pull you towards so if you're thinking about, you know, living in a temperate area or more in the tropics, I feel like the more more humid, more tropical climate might be better for you. And then I'm also seeing, you know, fireflies, um, they emit light 
in an in 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 a very dark environment so i feel that your guides are definitely pulling you away from something from a place of safety even from a place where it might be you're reading that book like might be a, a more academic environment paper pushing even and going into a, a place where you can explore a little bit more a place that's more childlike that's more fun that's more exciting so that's just something i want you to keep in mind as you make these decisions for the month of march um things are looking very very good okay you're working really hard i i feel i feel like a financial burden okay so you might be you you might feel like you have to carry the financial burden in a relationship in a household, in a situation, keeping things running. You might feel like you have to catch up to somebody's financial situation as well. Okay, you, you're quite independent. You don't want to have to rely on a partner for financial resources. You want to match your partner. And I feel like it takes a little bit out of you if you have to ask your spouse, can we buy, can I buy this? Or, you know, when you're not able to, to even tell your kids, I can't afford to buy that for you, it hurts. So I feel like there, there's some, uh, like a little bit of a chip on your shoulder when it comes to, you know, I want to be making money very, very fast. But at the